such a situation, we look at ourselves first. What have we done wrong? That the Almighty Allah inflicted us with such hardship or problems. And I want to thank all of you who are here, cross section of this country's leadership, various organizations. And I want to say with the June program we had, which we put together with former President Varja, who was supposed to be here, he's supposed to be in flight by now, and he will join us later, inshallah, where we brought all leaders from Pandev, from Pandev to Area Consultative Forum to Area of Elders to Middle Bell Forum to Afeni Ferry to Service Chiefs, retired General Service Chiefs, retired NSS, and retired heads of state. And we met for a long time in this hotel till late in the night. And inshallah, in the next few days, that team will meet again to look into what we discussed last June. And with today's gathering again, one could say definitely there is hope in finding solutions to the numerous problems, numerous challenges facing us. Because I know all of us here believed and identified that we have problems. And to believe, to know you have a problem, you have half of the solution. And the other half we are looking for is this type of gathering to talk to ourselves with all honesty and sincerity. And I believe that's what we owe each other, to be very honest and sincere with each other as we discuss in efforts to bring peace and stability to our country. Peace is the most important aspect of our lives because without peace, you just can't do anything. You can't even worship God who created you to worship Him. And religion, we know, is an individual's problem between him and his maker. What leadership needs to do is to promote and provide a stable polity to enable me as a commoner to observe my religious beliefs freely without any disturbance, without any let or hindrance. And I think this forum is very important. And I want to thank all of you for coming. There have been so many initiatives across the world. And I think this one initiative by Global Peace Foundation is also one that will bring in other parts of the world to talk on one particular issue, that is peace across the world. I'm involved with so many programs across the world. And one particular program that I would like to bring our attention to is the Common Word Initiative. If you Google, uh, if you Google you on the Common Word, you'll see what that is. It was a letter in 2007 from Muslim leaders across the world to the then Pope in Rome, asking Christians and Muslims to come together because we were united by that common word. And since then we had been having a series of meetings across the world, and I took part in almost all of them, even though we have not met for quite some time now. But I want to, want to bring uh, to my, what brought me to, what brought this to mind is the need to have a common platform to serve humanity and to serve God as Christians, Muslims, Jews, Hindus, and whatever. And during one of the meetings we had on this common word at Yale University in Connecticut, USA, that time the theme was loving God and neighbor in words and deeds, implications for religious leaders. At the end of the two-day program, everybody agreed you cannot love God if you don't love your neighbor. Why? Because God created your neighbor. And we all agreed and left the meeting at Yale University. But what we are seeing today across the world, that love 
is lost. You find people killing innocent people, either in the name of religion or either in the name of a banditry or terrorism or whatever it is. And that's why we keep on calling on all of us to go back to our holy books and walk with the wordings of the Holy Quran for us Muslims and the Bible for Christians. So I think it's an important thing for us to always look back and discuss some of these issues openly. In Nigeria, we must stop laying blames. Whatever had happened, had happened, and will continue to happen unless we come together like this to address the situations, the problems. And that's exactly what we are doing this morning. We must not politicize insecurity because hunger does not know politics. Hunger does not know religion or ethnicity. And everybody has been complaining of hunger in the land, and it's true. At the last meeting in, of NIREC last week, Thursday, I've been here since Thursday. And we still have other meetings tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday, before we are moving back. And we all discuss, we all agree that there's, there's hunger in the land. And one of the major problems that we all know, a hungry man is an angry man. And when the anger is so bottled up in you, and you find no way to feed yourself, to calm you down, you can do anything. So I think it's important for us, whenever we meet as religious leaders, as political leaders, as regional leaders, we must always look at one thing. Let us serve humanity first. And if we do that and leave the rest to Almighty God, He will definitely uh, help us. So we must never, or we must stop politicizing insecurity. And that's what we have seen across the land. Parties are accusing one, 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 one another of doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that. I think that's one of the problems we've been having. I would like to thank Bishop Mosquito. <laughs> I called uh, Sunday Onoha Bishop Mosquito. <laughs> because it's one important point I would like to make. When we're talking of serving humanity, don't bring religion into it as a divider. But use the religion to knit you closer. We're in Washington, D.C. at World Malaria Day program. There were representatives from all over the world. Matthew and Cardinal Onayokon, who was the current president, were there. That's why we brought together Muslims and Christians to talk about removing malaria from the world. And what brings malaria? Mosquito. Mosquito, like I said in my program that day, and it became a, a sing song. Everybody was quoting me. Mosquito has no religion. He goes to churches on Sundays. He goes to mosques on Fridays. So that's why we decided to come together to unite to fight a common enemy. That common enemy is Mosquito. And since then, we appointed Bishop Onoa as the event director of NIFA. And NIFA is an organization we put together to fight malaria in Nigeria, and we've been having partnership from across the world, especially in the US, with our board members. So since then, our bishop had not looked back. He had been doing a lot, and that's why when he approached me to be part of this program, I said, inshallah, with Bishop Mosquito there, we know what we have achieved. I will come and attend, and also give my own little contribution. Last two weeks also, I spoke at National Unity Forum, even though I sent a message to one of, my, one of the AMS here to read, because we had another program in Sokoto. It was, it was held here in Abuja. And in the National Unity Forum, which I, we talked about, we brought about the challenges of uniting this country. And definitely we, are, we, are, we have various nationalities, we have various languages, we have various religions. I just had my brother here saying that we didn't bring an African religion. But before then, Sheikh was saying that we should adopt, we should take one minute silence to pray the way we want. But I think the 
Sheikh Maria didn't get it before he started the uh, prayer. But we always pray to ourselves, we pray in our minds, because prayer is always done at any time, at any second. You don't wait to be asked to pray before you pray. And at that program, I know I identified the problems we're having in the country. And what I said was that we can unite and move forward and serve humanity. You can be united, but you cannot be uniform. We can be united without being uniform. Now we have people here, Niger Delta, Middle Belt, Area Work Consultative Forum, everybody, different backgrounds. But we should all work towards one agenda, to be united. So I said we can be united without being uniform. And I think it's important for us to always look at how do we serve humanity, which is the most important uh, thing. And I think when we do that, the Almighty Allah will help us to overcome our challenges. As a military man, we like challenges. But challenge, because once you overcome a challenge, it's no longer a challenge. It's, it's giving you an, a, another edge to be a better person. So without challenges, you can't even be a better person because you continue to be in one place. Maybe that's what pushed Sheikh uh, Ahmad Gumi and Professor to go into the bush to look for bandits and talk to them without fearing for their lives, you know? Because it's a challenge to them. If, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if they were abducted and, and asked for one billion dollars also, maybe they could find money to, uh, to pay that or something, but they didn't care about that. But whatever somebody does, he should do it with that fear of Almighty, knowing that God is seeing him, even though you are not seeing God, and why you are doing it to, is to help humanity. And if Almighty Allah decrees it to be the shining light to bring problems to the end, it will be. But if not, we we'll continue to uh, work. So let this gathering be that shining light that definitely will brighten up our path to find solutions to the numerous problems of this great country. I would like to thank all of you for coming. I would like to thank our elders.